next we have Joey, Joey in patiently. Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Hi, you there? Yeah, yes. well, yeah, you're on. Oh, okay, cool. You're on TV. Um, I, I'm an ex-fundamentalist Christian, and uh, Congratulations. I'm a big fan of the show. You guys have really helped me out, sort of work things out, so appreciate that. Um, and I would just like to have you guys comment on two points, and I can just take my question off the air when I'm done. Um, okay. All sure. right. Okay. So the, the first is uh, there's this idea in Christianity that it's, uh, it's a relationship with Christ in that prayer is a method of strengthening that relationship and sort of developing oneself in Christ. And uh, you guys, I think Matt, have previously stated that prayer sort of violates this idea of free will because uh, in praying you're sort of asking God to intercede on humanity's behalf and sort of be active. Um, and I agree. Uh, but most fundamentalists would say that prayer is the acknowledgement of God's will and the willingness to do so. And if you guys could just comment on that, that'd be great. And uh, the second question is, you've also stated in the past that uh, the story of death the sacrifice of the daughter is a form of human sacrifice, and again, I agree. Uh -huh. But uh, modern Christians sort of rationalize this by saying uh, that this is a story that is a less about making promises with God and, and being really careful that you're not going to make the wrong promise or... You know, you might lose something pretty important, and uh, they sort of say that Jeff wouldn't have had to need, wouldn't have had to uh, sacrifice his daughter, had he not made that promise in the first place. And uh, if you guys could please comment on those two points, I'll be happy to take my call off the air. I appreciate it. Thank you, okay. Joey. Um, Thank you. Uh, yeah, you know, it's not like when uh, people, ha it's not like when somebody promises to sacrifice somebody that God would do something obvious like jump out of the bushes and say, oh, actually you don't need to sacrifice that person at all. <laughs> oh, wait, didn't he do that to, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, Isaac, Abraham? Isaac, yeah. yes, a Abraham. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, what kind um, of, <laughs> it's, it's, it's funny. I mean, it's just sort of all of these uh, things in the Bible that point to God being a real jerk, right? <laughs> and Christians are like, uh-oh. Okay, well, we'll, do well, that's just a, a story. It's a metaphor. The, it's, uh, uh, the uh, most interesting attempt oh, I've heard to uh, rationalize away the story of Jephthah is actually somebody who nitpicks the wording of the Bible and says, oh, it didn't actually say he killed her. It just said he did what he had promised. And then they make a big deal about her, like, bewailing her virginity, but not her impending death. Oh, I see. Um, and, and so it was like, <laughs> well, actually... If so that just read, makes it all better. If you read yeah. between the lines, she mm -hmm. actually like went off and joined a nunnery or something. Uh, <laughs> or I mean, okay. you know, she became celibate, and that's what, you know, that's that was the sad thing. So it's all back down saying, to the old "you're not <laughs> interpreting the Bible properly" thing. Yeah, I mean, um, this is one of the most extreme cases of biblical reinterpretation I mm -hmm. ever saw. Because when I went back over the passage, it says. He promised to sacrifice the first thing that came through his door. And then it says the first thing that came through his door was her. And then it says he did what he promised. I mean, I know kind that you can, I yeah. know that you can kind of screw around with uh, you know, with metaphors and stuff, uh -huh. but if the Bible is that badly written, then you really shouldn't be going on it as a guide anyway. Well, or especially if it like says things very clearly but then doesn't mean what it says. Yeah, it means then, the opposite of what it says. Yeah. But you, you, you know, this is this is fascinating. You you will hear a lot of Christians argue for <coughs> the Bible is a source of morality, God right. is a source of morality, right? And then they have to do all of this intellectual gerrymandering when you suddenly you know wave the Bible at them and say, well, here's an example of your God doing something amazingly immoral, right? Yeah. What's interesting is they know that that's that to be the case, of right? Of course oh, they th do. This is a very wrong thing to do. So, but they can't I, just cross I would that argue line to say that if somebody went in not knowing anything about uh -huh. what biblical morality meant and uh -huh. and not having the context of all this, what liberal Christians say, man-made religion. Uh -huh. um, if they just went in and read the freaking Bible and and read it as meaning what it appeared to mean, mm -hmm. you could not get away from the conclusion that God ordered that that God supported this promise of human sacrifice. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, why is the story even in there? Why bother bringing it up? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and if you don't have this literalistic reading of the Bible, uh, then, I mean. You know, there, there's, 
the only real way to come at this morality that you guys want to have is to filter it through the things that you already understand, understand. from mm -hmm. society and right. from your upbringing are good and bad. And that's the only reason why you would reinterpret the Bible to say, oh, that passage doesn't really say what it says. Uh, mm -hmm. It really says this thing that makes more sense to me. Yeah. Um, you're not getting your morality from the Bible. No, you're, you're, you're attempting to make the Bible's very immoral passages. Uh, passages that you know to be morally d dubious at best, uh, and you're trying to shoehorn them into uh, a morality that you know to be contemporary and secular and stuff that you have simply gotten from your day-to-day -day life. Uh -huh. um, you know, in in uh, in this day and age, yeah, if you were to you know a parent to to, to agree to kill their own child for any reason, uh, it would be a monster. And so, in order to make but it, but it's right there in the Bible. But if it happens in the Bible, okay, then it's got to be okay in some context, therefore I simply have to contrive the context, you know, through all sorts of, you know, yeah, yeah mental gymnastics. All right. Uh, oh, that's right. He also wanted us to uh, talk briefly about, like, you know, the personal relationship Christians think they have to God. I'll defer to you on that. I don't know anything. Oh, well, um, <laughs> for the very brief time in my life that I was a Christian, I can't ever claim to have felt that way. Um, okay. But having been in that environment some, you know, I... I, I I think I kind of know what it's about. I think that it's um, maybe it's just a very uh, simple form of psychology that you know makes people always want to believe that you have a parent, so that, you know, looking over your shoulder, watching after you, keeping you safe. You know, it, it's a bit of emotional comfort, um, and I think that is it's one way in which Christians attempt to distinguish their religion from other religions. Mm -hmm. In fact, I hear that many times from a lot of Christians. It's like, oh, all those other religions are religions, right? But Christianity is not really a religion. Christianity is a relationship, and so that's it's it's more long. I can't terms of think of any other relationship it, where so. uh, believing that the target of your relationship exists is contingent mm -hmm. on having a relationship. Of yeah, faith. I yeah. mean, you know, everybody else I I know, uh, you know, my son, mm -hmm. uh, my friends, my parents. Uh, Every other relationship, I pretty much the uh, being acquainted with this person came before the relationship. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, as, as an actual real thing that exists. Never said it made sense, Russell. That's just kind of <laughs> how they do it. Yeah. So, anyway. <laughs>